Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So as we head into the holiday season, perhaps you have the DJI Avada on your list, or perhaps you received one as a gift this year. In this video, I'm gonna go over a list of accessories that will help enhance your enjoyment of the DJI Avada. Just keep in mind that not all accessories are for everybody. There are some here that you may find useful, but others that you may not. So with all that said, let's take a look at item number one. The first item that I recommend here is a battery strap for the goggles. This particular set here is designed for the goggles too, but if you got the Avada with the V2 goggles, there is a set for it as well. Basically, it's just a battery holder that clips onto the headband and it also comes with a short cable that plugs directly in. It's just a nice convenient way to keep things organized and it's still actually quite comfortable to wear. Now the second accessory I recommend is a remote. Now it does seem kind of strange that I have to recommend a remote as an accessory, but the Avada doesn't come standard with a traditional remote. It comes with the motion controller. Although the motion controller is a fantastic controller and I do enjoy flying with it, flying with a traditional controller just opens up a lot of different avenues. It allows you to fly in manual mode if you do decide to do that, but it just gives you a little bit more precision if you're trying to get some really interesting proximity shots. These were pretty hard to come by when the Avada was first released, but they are readily available in many online stores. Now the next accessory to consider if you're brand new to the DJI Avada is a charger. Unfortunately, the Avada does not ship with a charger. There's a good chance you may already have one laying around that does work. It's recommended to use a 65 watt charger for optimal charging speed. If you own the Mavic 3, you can use the 65 watt charger that comes with it. If not, these can be purchased separately. Anchor also has a nice 65 watt charger. It's nice and compact. And on both of these chargers, the plug folds in which is a nice feature. One thing that's really important to keep in mind if you are purchasing a charger, I would stick to at least 65 watts and make sure it has a USB-A port on it as well. Because unfortunately, if you go to charge the motion controller or the standard controller, you cannot plug 65 watts directly into it. It won't damage it, but it just won't recognize it and it won't charge it. You have to use the USB-A port in order to charge it correctly. Both these chargers have a USB-A port built in and work quite well. You can have fast charging for the batteries and proper charging for the controllers. Now, the next item I recommend is some form of landing pad. Of course, there are many do-it-yourself options that you can do, but with the Avada, it's very important to have a landing pad. This drone is a little bit different than other DJI drones that are easy to hand launch and hand catch. As you can see, the propellers are pretty open there at the bottom and there's not a lot to protect your hand. On top of that, when you have it sitting on a surface, the propellers are very close to the ground. So if you're gonna be taking off from long grass, gravel, snow, you want a nice hard surface to keep it away from all that debris. So definitely a good landing pad is something worthwhile investing in. Now the next item here is the Flymore kit that is available for the DJI Avada. When you purchase the Flymore kit, it gives you two spare batteries and it gives you a charging hub. When you purchase the Avada kit, it only comes with one battery and a single charger. Realistically, one battery is just not enough. You're going to find that's going to be very limiting. Purchasing a Flymore kit is going to increase your flight time and enjoyment. In fact, if you can afford it, I would recommend getting two. Myself, when I'm flying, I usually burn four or five batteries at a time, so that is something to keep in mind. If you end up purchasing lots of batteries, you may also want to consider getting a spare battery for the goggles. This battery actually does pretty well. Usually I can get through a whole flight session with just the one, but sometimes it is nice to have a spare, just for peace of mind. Now the next item you may want to consider, now this is not going to be for everybody, but you may want to consider a camera mount. The camera on the Avada is quite good, and most of the time when I'm flying with it, that's what I film with. But sometimes when I'm flying, I do want to capture with a GoPro just for a very specific look. The Avada is not really designed to have a GoPro mounted on the top, but I have made numerous flights with a GoPro mounted on top, and I've never had an issue. This particular mount is a non-permanent one, which means it can just be clipped on and off. It's very sturdy when it's on. I don't have any worry that it will fall off. Perhaps in the event of a crash, it might. But it's a nice choice if you just want to put a GoPro on it once in a while and you don't want to leave a permanent mount on it. There are other options if you do want a permanent mount that attach right to the frame and perhaps it may be a little bit more secure. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now the next item here you may want to consider is some ND filters. These can be pretty important for FPV drones when you're flying at a fast rate of speed. I'm not going to get into the whole what ND filters are for. I've made several videos about that in the past on my channel but they can be very important. They just clip on over top and they can actually help protect the camera as well in the event of a crash. This lens here is non-replaceable, so if you hit a hard surface, it's better to break an ND filter or scratch an ND filter than the camera that's built in. This set here is by Freewell. They make an excellent ND filter set, but you can also get the official DJI ones, as you can see here. So that becomes a personal choice. 
but I've used both extensively and both work well. Now the next accessory that I'm going to show you here is for a person who wears corrective lenses. You can actually order corrective lenses online. It's a very simple procedure and it's not very expensive. I did a review of a company called Hans VR a couple months ago and it's as simple as entering in your prescription and they offer free shipping. Usually you receive them within 10 days. It makes a world of difference when it comes to your flight experience. I highly recommend them. They're super easy to install. So definitely another accessory to consider if you wear corrective lenses. Now, another interesting item here you may want to consider is a set of bumpers for the Avada. As you can see, they just mount in the front there like that. They're held in by a screw. And what that does is gives you a little bit of extra protection. The Avada is actually really durable, but that just gives you that little extra protection. The way they're situated, they're out of the field of view. They're fairly thin and streamlined, so it doesn't really affect flight performance. So they're just a fairly inexpensive way to give yourself a little bit of extra insurance. Now, another item you may want to consider is a battery holder. If you've been watching videos online about the Avada, you know that sometimes in the event of a crash or an impact, the battery becomes dislodged. And the reason why that can be an issue is you need that battery to be connected in order to find your drone. The Avada has a feature in it called Find My Drone, which helps you locate the drone in the event of a crash. And that can be very important, especially if you've crashed a distance away from you or in long grass. It can help pinpoint exactly where it is. On top of that, it will make a beeping noise to help you locate it as well. But if that battery becomes ejected, those features don't work. There are many different ways in which you can help secure the battery in there. Some fairly inexpensive ones, but there are companies that sell accessories that help hold it in. Now, they may not be foolproof in a really hard impact. Your battery still may become dislodged, but anything you can do to help increase the chances of it staying in are beneficial. With this particular clip here, it just mounts over the battery there like that. As you can see, it latches over the frame and it should increase the chances of preventing the battery from becoming dislodged. Now, one last thing you should consider getting for your Avada is a case for transportation. There's two main types of cases you can get for drones, hard cases and soft cases, something like a shoulder bag or a backpack. Both work really well for what they're intended for. GPC has a really nice hard case for the Avada. It's a little expensive, but it's a really good quality case. And it's what I store mine in when I'm not using it. It can hold a total of five batteries, two goggle batteries, and lots of accessories. It's fully waterproof, so if you're going to be in and around water with your drone, it's a good way to keep your gear protected. Alternatively, DJI sells a nice FPV backpack that works with both the Avada and the DJI FPV system. Lots of space to hold all your gear and some extra equipment. Very comfortable to wear, and it's made of a really nice durable material. Well, folks, that's basically it. That's my list of accessories for the DJI Avada that you may want to consider. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it and found it had value, make sure you hit that thumbs up button as it's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.